look at the plastic surgery thing now, and it's kind of crazy. I mean, maybe this just reflects my age and my generation, but I see some people with wearing so much dark eye makeup, plus they're getting the cheekbone inserts. They look like skeletons. Mm -hmm. Now that's not, yeah, every, listen, everyone's got their taste, especially if they're really lean, you know, and then, but facial structure is something that can be modified. Mm. Women and men are like putting all the stuff on to figure out how to get rid of the droopy eyes. It's actually a facial muscle issue. And had, were they just to do some jaw exercises and focus on not mouth breathing, it completely changes the structure of the face in just two, three months. Low level light therapy with infrared light has been shown to be effective for the treatment of acne and other sorts of skin lesions. And some really nice studies actually where they use subjects as their own internal control. So people, believe it or not, agreed to have half of their face illuminated with red light or near infrared light, and the other half of their face serve as a control and to do that for several weeks at a time. And you can see pretty impressive reductions in skin lesions, reductions in scars from acne, and reduction in acne lesions themselves, meaning the accumulation of new acne cysts with low-level light therapy using red light and infrared light. In the morning, you need a lot of UVB exposure, or we should be getting a lot of UVB exposure to our eyes and to our face and to our skin throughout the day, provided we're not getting sunburnt. This is actually a healthy thing for mood and for energy throughout the day. It's only at night, basically between the hours of about 10 p.m. and 4 a.m., that even a tiny bit of UVB exposure from artificial sources can mess us up in terms of our sleep and our energy levels and so on. And that's because of the potent effect of UVB on suppressing melatonin. Skin functions as an endocrine organ. Many of you have probably heard of vitamin D3, which is a vitamin that we all make. Many people supplement it as well if they need additional vitamin D3. We all require sunlight in order to allow vitamin D3 to be synthesized and perform its roles in the body. And it turns out that people who have darker skin actually need more vitamin D3 and or more sunlight exposure in order to activate that D3 pathway than do people with paler skin. And this should make sense to all of you, given what you now understand about melanocytes, that cell type that we discussed earlier, because melanocytes have pigment within them. And if you have darker skin, it means that you have more melanocytes or that you have melanocytes that are more efficient at creating pigment. And as a consequence, the light that lands on your skin will be absorbed by those melanocytes and less of it is able to impact the D3 pathway. Whereas if you have pale skin, more of the light that lands on your skin can trigger the synthesis and assist the actions of vitamin D3. Similarly, in this study, they found that people who had paler skin and or who originated from countries where they had less UVB light exposure across the year, had greater, meaning more significant increases in testosterone overall than did people who already were getting a lot of UVB exposure. This led them to explore so-called seasonal changes in testosterone that occurred normally in the absence of any light exposure treatment. So up until now, I've been talking about the aspects of this study involving people getting outside for about 20 to 30 minutes per day in sunlight in a minimum of clothing. There was an increase in testosterone observed in both men and women. The increases in testosterone were greater for people that had paler skin than darker skin. If you're somebody who's experiencing chronic pain, provided you can do it safely, try to get some UVB exposure, ideally from sunlight. I think the 20 to 30 minute protocol two or three times per week is an excellent one. It seems like a fairly low dose of UVB light exposure. It's hard to imagine getting much damage to the skin. Of course, if you have very sensitive skin or if you live in an area of the world that is very, very bright and has intense sunlight, particular times of year, you'll want to be cautious. Heed the warnings and considerations about sunscreen that I talked about earlier or about wearing a hat. But the point is very clear. Most of us should be getting more UVB exposure from sunlight.